Hello. It's time for a new What We Read That's right. Episode. Bringing the season to a, you know, I don't know a little closer point. to the, yeah. <laughs> to the end of the year, something there. And anything past the midpoint is really that, really, if you think <laughs> about it. So that's where we are. Anyway, this time around, Maki has been reading a bunch more stuff. Because I'm all about that digital life. <laughs> I've been practicing that all day. That's terrible. I'll, I'll see myself out. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, that hasn't really changed from the beginning of the year, has it? But we're gonna hopefully try to shorten a little bit all of our blabbering on about books. Although I know you guys enjoy hearing us talk Which about books. Which is super, so. like, thank you for the people yeah. who are like, we enjoy, like, every time yeah, anybody's like, we love you watching us. Like, our videos. Wow, that's, we're just being, like, We literally are just us. sitting in front of like, a camera, just, being ourselves, talking about oh, yeah, books. So, so, and fangirling when the occasion calls for it. Which is great for us and extremely cathartic, but that other people are like, oh, this is nice. And I'm like, oh, okay, yay. Because, you know, introverts uh, that Unite. we are. Yeah. <laughs> At home, by yourselves, away from each other, which is technically YouTube. Yes, that's true. Oh my gosh, that is true. Right? All those memes about introverts unite at home, away from each other. It's like, what's what streaming is technically. All right, anyway, so anyway, that's that introduction that. was very, very long. <laughs> but we failed already. No, we're, we haven't. We, we haven't, haven't failed we haven't. yet. We will find out. Okay, find so out. I guess I will start off first. Yeah, am I going go for first? It. Okay. So I am going to talk about a couple of middle grade books that I read. Huzzah! Specifically, I read them all during the month of October because I felt like the magical slash spooky vibes that each one of them had just felt right for that no, month. Okay, that's fair. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a 2020 release, actually, and it's The Girl in the Witch's Garden by Erin Bowman. The reason I picked this up is partly because of this cover, because it looks like a Studio Ghibli movie poster, you know? Well, yes, look at it. And second of all, the book has in an estate with a sort of secret magical garden in it, which, Done. you know, wanted to read it very badly. So the story is about a main character named Piper, and she has to spend the summer at her grandmother's estate. Once she's there, she finds out that her mom, who has been separated from her dad for like years, mm -hmm. is actually fostering three kids. Oh. And she also finds out that apparently there are certain individuals who are gifted with special talents, and the mom and the grandma would like the kids to use their special talent to locate this magical garden in order to retrieve something that was hidden within it. Does she have powers? Yes, she does. All right, cool. So it's, it's a really cute middle grade helps. story. The setup is very much something that middle grade aged Alexa would have loved. Like I would have been obsessed with it. And I think that Erin Bowman tells such a satisfying story because she does that thing in middle grade where there are serious things going on. Specifically, Piper is dealing with her father being sick and what that means for her in her future. Plus, she's also still got, you know, those leftover issues from her mom abandoning her as a child. Yeah. And finding her mothering a bunch of other powerful exactly. kids. I'm just like... Plus, you know, there's the whole mystery of what actually is happening at this estate. What actually is happening. <laughs> Which you'll find out when you read the book. And I liked it a lot. Like, I don't necessarily think I loved it as much as I thought I was going to, but I thought it was extremely charming. I like the magical aspect of it. It's definitely one of those stories where I'm like, now I'm thinking about like what kind of ability I would have liked to have. I also think that there could have been potential for this one to be more of like a companion novel series. I would have loved to see the adventures of the other children in the story too, like okay, in the future. Okay. But for what it was as a standalone, it was very satisfying to read. I like the themes that were said, like inserted into the story, and I also really liked the way that everything kind of wrapped up by the end. So very magical, very nice, like, you know, lighter and you'll see what I mean by that shortly. Lighter, middle grade read for me, despite the fact that it does deal with a lot of traumatic events. So, very good. The next two books are part of the same series, and it's still an ongoing series. And it is called the Cassidy Blake series. It's by uh -huh. Victoria Schwab. These are her middle grade books. And the two books are City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones. So and prolific. This they are show. ghost stories, essentially. They're about a main character named Cassidy. After a near-death experience, she now has the ability to see ghosts and to travel into the veil, basically, mm. and, you know, interact with ghosts Very that way. Cool. Her best friend is actually a ghost That's named Jacob, sure. who is the one who saved her from drowning. Right. Right. Anyway, the series kicks off when Cassidy is told by her parents that they're going to go to Edinburgh because they're going to film episodes for their new show that's mm -hmm. based on the book series they write. They're basically going to be ghost hunting, except that they can't actually see ghosts, not like Cassidy does. Not like Cassidy does. And Cassidy discovers that there might be a bigger world out there when it comes to ghosts and 
ghost hunting and what she's meant to do with this newfound ability mm -hmm. and what it means that she and Jacob are sort of tied to each other the way they are. Right. So in this one, there is a murderous ghost. In this one, there is a child ghost. And this one is set in Paris, actually, in the second Ooh. book. And I actually listened to both of these on audiobook and it was so much fun. I think it just added to the whole like creepy experience to hear someone narrating these things. I love that we got a bit of Edinburgh and a bit of Paris. I think that she did a very good job with the settings in both books. And I also really enjoyed Cassidy and just watching her sort of come to terms with, you know, what it means that she can see the ghosts, how to sort of overcome her fears at some point there are a variety of them really and i like that we get to see her grow up a bit between the two books personally i like the second book a lot more which i think is funny because a lot of people prefer the first i just i don't know i think it's just because we've already established who cassidy is we kind of know the main players in her story and i'm also partial to the fact that it's set in paris and then there's a whole bit in the catacombs like very nice. It was a very, very nice story. As usual, Schwab shows off her storytelling prowess. Like, she is really good at writing entertaining, compelling, very quick to read stories that are very atmospheric. And this is perfect for the spooky season because ghosts and murder and mayhem and, you know, all of that fun stuff. <laughs> so, highly recommend them whether you decide to pick up physical copies. These are the UK editions, by the way. That's why they're in paperback oh, they and have a different though. cover design. I'm very excited for the third book, although I was really surprised when the setting was not European. The third book is actually going to be set in New Orleans, which okay, good, does make was, sense. Because I was thinking it's like some <laughs> random American state like no, Nebraska no, or no, like no, Nola makes sense Wyoming or, or something. Story it's story setting, like, don't you think? I'm not saying, yeah, oh no, totally. No, yeah. no, New Orleans is so like the very, French Quarter. I'm very excited to read those as well, so I'm glad I finally got to these. All right, I will take a break from my middle grade discussions. And, and move uh, on to can... my middle grade discussions. <laughs> no, this is just beyond the very, very far, far north. That's a lot of words for a children's book, but it's a lot of feels for a children's book either. It's by Dan Barrell and a lot of illustrations from Kelly Poussette, I want to say. I probably butchered both of their names and I apologize. But no, this is a sequel to the very, very far, far north. Sorry, doing the polar bear and most of my 2019 feels. <laughs> um, it's just, it's one of Not those, wrong. this is one of those Winnie the Pooh type, you know, genres where you've got a bunch of, bunch of anthropomorphic animals that are basically suddenly friends forever. And they have their idi idiosyncrasies. Suddenly friends forever. Well, yeah, and they have the idiosyncrasies. And I think one of the best things that this book has done is to be sort of better than the first one. Because the first one, the plot was just, we're suddenly going to become friends forever. This is the story. And this book is a lot more of, well, there's a lot of growing up happening in this book. A new element is introduced into the very far, very far, far north. And it's something that Dwayne and his friends are going to have to just get over and deal with. And not in, and in the most adult kind of way whatsoever. Like if adults settled things the way the kind of like fr friendly animals did here, I think the world would be a better place. And that's a great lesson to teach kids. It's like I, like I would rec like I, in the same way that I would have recommended the first book for like a middle grade class, I would definitely recommend this because people need to like, this is how you deal with stuff. This is how, when terrible things happen, this is how you sort of respond to them. And and, and I, that's one of the reasons why I think this is one of the best books that I've read all year. Albeit this is one of the actual physical books that I've one of less than I can count on my hand all year. But it, worth it, totally worth it. And if it's like there's a party. In and the very, fun. very far In the very, 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 just beyond. The very, oh, I'm sorry, just beyond. Very, 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 very far, north. far, far north. Also another book that I have read that is near and dear to my heart and I think has done the original so much justice that it is going to like I can already see like all of my money going to this in the net for the next 50 books and if there's ever going to be shelf space at all it'll just be it, 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 it'll, it'll like more money to go it's it's Animorphs volume one of the graphic right. the graphic novel version the invasion and for those of you who are late to the Animorphs party e.g. you were born after 1990 whatever right because you just were a tiny child when these books came out and ended the Animorphs came out at a time when you look tiny little books like Goosebumps and Sweet Valley Twins and you're just kind of like tiny like large tiny wide books sort of came out and tiny the, wide books you know and they, they came in like 54 51 whatever episode uh, like you know episodic yeah type they were very long ones and uh, it's about a bunch of kids who are unlikely sort of like walking home buddies one night cut through an abandoned parking uh no cut through an abandoned construction site yeah and an alien ship crash lands and to my horror because i know what the story is i am sobbing within the first like few pages of this book 
uh, this this graphic novel, and the alien just sort of plops out and it's dying. And... I like I said, plops. Well, out. you know that well, makes it sound more dignified than it actually dying. It just I, I'm trying to make, add a little levity because I am going to just sub and okay, hysterically. Fair enough. Fair For enough. those of you who've watched the animals, you know what I'm talking about. You know why this is so painful if you read every single thing. But anyway, the alien plops out and says, "Oh my God, I'm dying!" And here comes the ship, and they're all gonna kill you, and they're actually among you already. So let me give you powers. I almost feel like this could be my own drunk history channel. <laughs> So like, you know what I mean? It's like you got all, you know, all the characters. It's like, oh my god, so let me give you powers. And then the alien comes in and he's like, I got powers too, and I'm the only one who does. And and, and a battle, a guerrilla battle, a guerrilla war mm -hmm. begins between these five human children who the bad aliens think are actually five of the opposing alien forces. Mm -hmm. um, kind and of, Earth is you know, the battleground. And, and Earth is the battleground for the final invasion. It's a secret invasion right now. Any fan of the Animorph series should pick this up. Like, art-wise, it's for kids, obviously. But Which the point, themes, though, it stays, the, It's and it's one of the darkest. Which I think is probably what grabbed me, is because you would expect, like, this is one of those, ooh, this is Goosebumps, and I have a, and I have a, oh, well, was it RLC? Yeah, I yes. have a mask that I'm turning into the mask, and there is no seam. Which is also And then, you know, and then my little brother picks it up at the end. So, you know, like, totally spoiled that, I apologize. But it's not that level of dark. This is the kind of dark world, and then there's episode two. And it hits so hard. It's still one of the best opening books in a while. So please, please, please go grab that. Moving on to sort of like a little bit of, you know, same same kind of theme of kids sort of against the Big Bad Universe. I read the graphic novel Kids with oh, a Z. I think you mentioned that. Um, it's just a, it's like a five, six part sort of like mini kind of thing. It's a bunch of kids in, in the zombie apocalypse. I think it's pretty dark too because it's a bunch of survivors. And it's not kind of like zombie land where they're just blasting zombies, they're like, you know. But yeah, they're, they're a bunch of kids and they're just trying to survive. There's a charm to it. I don't think Netflix is going to pick it up anytime soon. Touching. I liked it. A little creepy. And then you got a bunch of like 12 year olds drive into another state, like in the middle of an apocalypse. I mean, it's an apocalypse. And, and trying to survive going from house to house. It's just bananas. So if you like the zombie apocalypse genre and you like a little levity, totally for you. Lastly, lastly, just for nostalgia, I, I reread the first ever run of X-23 because I really do, I really do love X-23. Laura Kinney so much. She is Wolverine's clone. For those of you who watched the movie Logan, the tiny little girl who is now in his dark materials, that girl, Laura, this is her story. Obviously, the Logan R rating as it was is a sanitized version of, of, of Laura's story. True, true. And Laura's story actually did not involve Logan up until, you know much 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 later she just managed to escape and sort of make a life for herself or at least try after assassinating several sort of like folks etc you know whatever captain america's involved oh oh yeah that's right and he brings matt murdoch into it because i need a lawyer i need to know if she's lying or not it's, it's great it's wild for anybody who wants to you know sort of like tap into the actual x-23 story this is the book for you please read it it's still good it has stood the test of time it has aged well i'd like to think who doesn't love like you know blood guts violence control and a lot of scientific experiments done in a poor child that eventually murders everyone moving forward so that's always fun <laughs> Yeah, that's. I think that's more your wheelhouse than mine. One hundred percent my wheelhouse. <laughs> anyway, to round up this, what we read, I get to talk about another duology. This time, it's just a duology, just two books, and I reread *The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding* and finally read *The Last Life of Prince Alistar*, both by Alexandra Bracken. Alex Bracken this rules. is her middle grade series. Perfect again for the spooky season, and I'm very glad I finally got to it. So the premise of the first book is that Prosper Redding is pretty much the most unexceptional member of his family. At least, he thinks so, until the day he finds out that his body is actually housing a demon. <laughs> and this is a demon that the family is trapping, basically, because he was the reason they were prosperous in the first place, and he kind of wants revenge on them for, you know, trapping them. Using him, uh, yeah. So the entire premise of the first book centers around Prosper trying to find a way to get Alistar out of his body. And the second book kind of continues on the journey from that book. So I will say that these are just fun, very cheeky, middle grade reads. The humor in them is probably my favorite thing about them. It's just, Alistar is my favorite character just solely for the language and the persona that he's been given by Alex Bracken. He is hilarious to me. And it is especially funny to listen to him if you're reading it by audiobook because that narrator does such a good job bringing the character to life. I do think that it's fun because it's sort of a family saga a little bit, cool. but at the end of the day, it is a story about Prosper and about Alistar and sort of how their stories 
even if they're not exactly the same and obviously they deal with very different circumstances considering Prosper is human and Alistair is obviously a fiend or a demon. Sure. They do actually have very similar life situations that they go through and it's funny because you're kind of seeing them reflect it back at each other without even knowing that and I think that's absolutely fascinating. I will say I did prefer the second half of this book and definitely this second book to the first half because it does start off a little bit slow. There's a lot of a gradual build as you sort of find different things out about Prosper, his family, this whole deal with Alistair and Alistair's own history. Whereas in this book, again, everything has been well established so you kind of know where you're coming from right. and now it's just basically the downhill spiral after all that's gone down in, at the end of this book. It was very exciting. It was really fun. I was so interested the entire time I was listening to the audiobook and I just, I just had a really good time with it. Like, if you're, you know, recommending books for younger readers who want something a little bit more spooky and seasonal for around, like, you know, October or autumn, these are great books to recommend. They're not particularly Halloween-centered, although Halloween is sort of close to the time that these books happen. But I feel like just the vibes are very spooky season because, you know, demons, witches, possession. I mean, <laughs> like, can you Happy go Halloween. wrong, really? Also... The sheer amount of magical beings that are actually in this that duology, like fun. so much that fun. Like fun. I actually told Mackie that I think he really should read them because I really think Alistair is basically one facet of his personality. <laughs> and I'm I have been pretty told. sure I am not wrong. I have so, been told. highly recommend. I'm so glad I finally finished this duology. Would definitely recommend you check it out. All righty. And I think that's all we've got today. What pretty, is it? That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Pretty mm. pretty short what we read for us, I think. Yeah, but all a lot considered. of fun titles. Well, we'll see if we can do that for the next few videos. <laughs> But a lot of fun titles. Definitely fun. We hope you enjoyed watching this What We Read. Please let us know if you've read any of the things that we talked Hall about. Right back at us. Because these were a lot of good stuff, I think. It was yeah, mostly good stuff for all of us stuff, yeah. and things we really enjoyed. And we hope you guys will come back and watch our next video next week. Bye! Bye.